Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at 10 graphic design tips in about 10 minutes. Now the video is going to be a little longer than 10 minutes because we've got our intro and outro and all that jazz, but the actual tip part, about 10 minutes. I'm really bad sticking to timing stuff, so I'm begging for your forgiveness before the video even starts if it runs long uh, because I, they usually tend to run long. I'll just be honest, but I'm, I've got a stopwatch here. I'm going to do my best to, to really stick to this. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's an example of what we're going to be creating. And it's going to be sort of pulling this resume together um, and, and some of the important tips and tricks along the way that I think are going to be really helpful for you as a graphic designer using Photoshop. Uh, some of these things maybe be better suited to do in Illustrator, but if you're a graphic designer using Photoshop, these are going to be 10 things that you're going to find super useful. And if you enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, if you really like the video, well, there's a link that just appeared right up there. You can pick up my Photoshop course. This entire channel is funded by people just like you. And if you pick up that course, thank you so much. If not, hey, Continue watching this video because it's totally free and it all starts right now. All right, so we've got the uh, the resume here, but the first tip is going to be finding a good color scheme. And we're going to do that by using color.adobe.com. You see that color.adobe.com. We're going to go over to explore. And for this particular project, I'm going to run a search for just like Vegas or something. Let's look for Las Vegas and it's going to load up. There we go. Vegas, Vegas sunset. That looks perfect. I'm going to click Vegas sunset and I'm going to come over here and choose to save it to my creative cloud library. Now I am going to save it here to my color scheme folder which has nothing in it but I'm going to save it to color schemes Vegas sunset is perfect I'm going to choose to save it now if I jump back over here to Photoshop and I open up my libraries panel window libraries I can navigate to my color schemes and there it is Vegas sunset brought right into Photoshop and since we have our color scheme, let's roll over to file and create a new document where we can begin assembling our uh, resume. So we're going to go with the standard eight by eight and a half by 11. I'm sorry, eight and a half width, 11 height. I'm going to go with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch and a CMYK color mode because this will probably be printed. Go ahead and choose create. And then what we're going to do is go view and choose new guide layout. And we're going to create a quick guide uh, layout here. We're going to tick on columns and rows and I want to go with three columns and seven rows. That's the way we're going to space this. And we're going to give these bad boys a gutter of 40 pixels a piece. And we're also going to give this file a margin. So I'm going to tick on margin. I'm going to tick on preview again so I can see that. And then here I'm just going to type in one in for one inch. We're going to go with a one inch margin everywhere and choose OK. And we've set up our file with guides. Last thing we need to do is go view and make sure snap to guides is turned on and snap is checked on. Man, I feel like we're flying through this. All right, number three, I'm just going to bump my uh, libraries panel, collapse it up here a little bit. We're going to go ahead and work with some shapes. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing a shape and I'm not going to give it a stroke. So I'm going to select stroke and choose no stroke. And you can see it has no fill. Maybe I'll give it a fill. I'll give it like a light blue. And all we're going to do is click once. And I know the width and uh, height that I want. I want 325 pixels by 30 pixels high. I'm going to choose OK. Then I'm going to grab my move tool and remember, snapping is turned on so it's going to snap right into place there we go we have that first block hold down your alter option key and we can duplicate this block and it's going to snap right to the edge of the next block hold down alter option drag out another copy and boom we have three nice blocks across the top you can see three rectangle shapes now what we can do select the first rectangle shape and all we need to do to change the fill is double click on the color here in this color theme that we want it to be so i want it to be the yellow i'm going to double click boom yellow i'm going to go to the one next to it i want it to be this middle sort of peachy color double click and then for the shape on the end i want it to be the the darker blue color, double click, and there we go. We have our initial set of shapes with colors from our color theme. And now the fourth thing that I want to talk about is finding fonts and finding font pairings. So I'm going to jump back over to Google Chrome. Uh, number one, fontsquirrel.com. Great site, lots of amazingly high quality free fonts. You got to check it out. Now I have this article linked in the description to the video as well. 10 golden rules you should live by when combining fonts, tips from a designer. There's 10 great things that you really ought to look over in terms of how to figure out like why do I choose this font versus that font and how to find two fonts 
fonts that look really good and kind of work together. Now, the two fonts that we're going to use here in Photoshop is a uh, number one, a font called Novacento Bold and another font called Libre Baskerville, both of which are free. You can get them both on fontsquirrel.com. That's what we're going to use. And just to give us a quick example, I'm going to look at sort of the finished, uh, the finished resume here. Uh, our header text here, her name, Melissa Harris, that's three times larger than this little tagline beneath. Uh, and the header text is also going to be twice as large as sort of the subheader text, as you will. And then I also made sure the body text down here is about five times smaller than the header text. So I set my, my main primary header text, and then I'm just choosing the size of everything else off of that. Um, so, you know, and, and I work with, you know, does it look good? Does it not look good? And then I figure out, all right, this is going to be three times smaller or two times smaller, whatever it has to be. And that's how I determine uh, the different sizing. But again, your sizing is going to mainly be determined. The more you work with the stuff, the more you're going to be able to look at it and say, well, this looks good. That doesn't look good. Um, and you can kind of play around and find a ratio that works for you. So I think it's time to move along to the fifth thing. And that is using character styles and actually building out our fonts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to this copy of the resume. I'll grab my text tool and I'm just going to click once and I'm going to type out her name, Melissa Harris. And what we need to do is begin creating a character style. So the character styles panels up here, window character styles. And the idea behind character styles is you can save the, the font, the size, the color, everything that's associated with your piece of type. So it can be applied to other areas of the document. And let's say the client says, Hey, I want to change the color of the text. All you need to do is come in and change the character style and all the color, all the font, all the text, all the sizing, all the, everything you change will be updated all across your document. So here's how we're going to do it with Melissa Harris. So with Melissa Harris, before we even worry about about setting a character style. Let's come over here to our character panel and we want to get our font, which we know is the Nova Cento, right? We're going to go with the Nova Cento Sans Wide Bold and I'm going to set the size of this to 40 points. So there we go. It's nice and large. We're going to make it all caps. So we're going to choose this option right here, make it all caps. And then from the color, well, we'll just double click this middle peachy color. Eh, maybe the color just a little bit lighter than that. There we go. Something like that. And once I've done that, we'll jump back into the character panel, actually the paragraph panel panel, I'm sorry, and we'll make sure that we align this to the right, and then we'll kind of drag it into position up here. I know I want it to be aligned, if I zoom in a little bit, I want it to be aligned with this guideline over here on the right, and I want it to be about 30 pixels beneath my colored line. So I'll hold down my shift key with the move tool selected, hold down my shift key and hit the down arrow key one, two, three times. There we go. That's about where we want our initial title to be. Now, once we have this title, we can double click on the text and we load it up as a selection like that, go back to the character panel, and then come down here and choose new character style. Now we can double click on this character style and we can give it a name, something like primary header. And you can see Novacento Sans wide, bold, 40 point with that color. Great. Hit OK. And there we go. We have created our primary header character style. So now let's go ahead and create the little tagline of text that goes beneath her name. All right, I'm going to grab the text tool and actually I'm going to select one of the shape layers here. I'm just going to click to add a text field and paste in the information that I want. You can see here we've got all this information, but this is not at all correct. So let's open up. Well, we can open up our character panel and see that right now it's trying to apply sort of primary header. Just ignore that. Let's go to the character panel here and let's choose the Libre Baskerville. We don't want all caps ticked on. We can shut that off. Uh, from the color, we want to go ahead and choose the darkest color here in our Vegas sunset uh, color scheme. We want to change it from bold to italic and we want to reset the size here, reduce it down to 13 point. Now for this text, we'll also just make sure we're aligned to the right, which we are. Grab the move tool. Let's move it over and, and roughly put it in place. We'll adjust it a little bit more in a second. Double click to load that uh, text up and load it as a selection. Go back to the character panel. And now we're going to go and say, look, new character style. We double click on this and we can name this tagline. And you can see Libre Baskerville, italic, 13 point with our color. Great. Hit OK. And there we go. And just really quick, let's select that text. And we're just going to nudge it up. And I want to just line it up right there with that guideline. So let's nudge it down. There we go. Cool. And there we go. We have the first two bits of text all aligned. We've created two character styles and I think we're ready to move on to the next step. Let's talk about number six, which is going to be grouping and aligning elements, just some general organization. So I threw in a couple additional bits of text here. In fact, I'm going to move these down beneath that in my layers panel, just so it looks kind of like it does on the resume with name tagline. And then this stuff, uh, let's talk about aligning this stuff real quick. So we can take like the email, which is down here 
here on the bottom. We can bring it all the way down here and just make sure because we have snapping turned on, we have a really good idea of where it's going to line up. We have it lining up here, the bottom of the Y with our guide line and the edge of the M is running into our guide over there. And then for phone, I think what I want to do is to also bring it over so the four is touching the guide line, but I want to nudge it upward and have about a 40 pixel buffer between the top of my email address and the phone. So with the move tool selected, hold down your shift key and nudge upward one, two, three, four. There we go. And then I think to fill in this little bit of a gap here, let's go ahead and grab the rectangle tool and click once and let's do a 100 pixel by five pixel rectangle. We're going to create five of these little guys. So just grab your move tool, hold down alter option. Let's drag out a few of these, right? Just like this. And then because snapping is turned on, we can go back and we can just kind of drag these and make them click into each other. See that one just going to click right into there. And now that we have all of these, we can also color these just like we were coloring everything before. So we could start with the one on the far right. We could maybe make that one yellow and then just use our color scheme and back it right along the, uh, basically take it back along the color scheme just as we see. So we've got this nice little colored strip. Now let's turn our attention for a second to the layers panel. So I have all these rectangles. We can select these rectangles, select the bottom rectangle, hold down shift, select the top rectangle, command or control G, and we can say thin colored line, right? Something like that. And now we always know what this thin colored line is, but more importantly, we can do something like take the rectangular marquee tool and say we want this thin colored line to align perfectly right here between vertically between the bottom of our text here and the top of our text here, but also we want to align it horizontally between this guideline and that guideline. So we create the selection around it. We select that layer group. We grab the move tool and now we can align boom and boom and it's gonna be lined right up in there. Go select, deselect to get rid of that. And just like that, we've aligned the colored line. Maybe we can drag it beneath all of our text. And you can also go and just, you know, group up the thick colored line as well. And of course, once we add her photo here to the header, we can group all of the header information into another folder. So we really just keep our PSD organized. So if we're working on it or a coworker's working on it, everybody will know where everything is. And speaking of the photo, let's go ahead and add that. So I don't just like to jump in and throw a photo onto a resume. I like to create sort of a placeholder for the photo and I'll show you how to fill the photo in. So I want to create a rectangle. So grab the rectangle tool, make sure you're drawing with a shape. The color does not matter. We want the bottom left corner of the photo to be over here, right down in that corner. If you have snapping turned on, it's gonna snap you to your guides. Everything's gonna be great. And then I want it to be as tall as the top of the text. So I can see the height is 290. 96 pixels. See that H 296. Great. So then I'm just going to move this over. I'm going to make sure my height is at about 296. Bam. There's my placeholder for the photo. Now, all I need to do, I'm going to drag this up. In fact, I'm going to drag this above all the text. All I need to do, and I have a photo here in my library is under downloads. I'm going to drag this photo in and Photoshop will load up a smart object. I can, I can size it down. Just hold your shift and alt or shift and option keys, size it down until you think it'll fit into uh, into your little placeholder, maybe make it a little bit larger. Great. Hit the enter or return key to commit that change. And then all we need to do is take this image and clip it to the layer beneath using the hotkey command option or control alt and the letter G. And you can see, there we go. We have our photo. Now the beauty of this is I can take the photo and I can readjust and position it wherever I like. I could go ahead and maybe they say, you know, I want more of my face. You can just reposition it and you'll have this nice little placeholder that holds your photo and it just looks Beautiful. And whoa, look at that. Let's move right along to number eight. I just dropped in all of this content, but I want to talk about creating some lines. Now you could use the line tool, uh, but in this case, we're going to use the type tool to create some lines. I'm going to click once and I'm just going to hold down the equals uh, button on my keyboard. In fact, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and we're going to make a really long line of equal signs. And I'm just going to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going, make it nice and long. And then I'm going to commit that change. And what I'll do is go select all to load my document as a full selection. I'm going to go to the paragraph panel and we'll just align this to uh, just basically center the text up. And I'm just going to align this within my document. So go back to the move tool and make sure we just go ahead and align it just like that. Great. Uh, you can go select deselect. Let's zoom in on this so we get an idea of what we're looking at. Right about there is where I think I want the line to go. I want it to go just, you know, obviously between the content and these little headers we created. But if I go back to the character panel, 17 points is a bit too large. Let's knock this down to about eight. 
All right, and you can see here if we zoom out, we still have, you know, we're st we still have plenty of, of line going on either side, but we need to nudge it upward a little bit more. So let's nudge it upward, boom, just like that. Uh, the color I think is perfect. We can go back to our color schemes, and I think that greenish color, which is what it is, I think that's gonna work perfectly for our, uh, our document here. Let's zoom out. And what we want to do is mask these lines so they stay within our guidelines. You see how they're just shooting way out on the ends over here? But I think we'll take care of all that masking stuff in just a second. Let's simply duplicate this line. So hold on your Alt or Option key, click and drag, holding Shift, and drop a line down here. So I'm gonna drop this line down here, and you can see I've got a second line. That's exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and hold down Alt or Option, hold down my Shift key, and I'm gonna drop yet another line all the way down here. I'm gonna make sure it's exactly lined up how I want it, just like that. And now I have all of my horizontal lines. Now what I need to do is add a couple vertical lines here, like right down this, this gutter and also down this gutter. So all we need to do is duplicate one of these lines of equal signs, Command or Control J, and then go Edit, Free Transform, and just choose to rotate it. So if we move out, you can see how I got the little you know rotating arrow. Hold down Shift, rotate it straight up just like that, and then we can just drag it right into place. So I'm just gonna kind of manually position it here in the middle of this gutter exactly where I think it needs to go, probably right about there. And then I'll hold down my Alt or Option key, hold down Shift, and drag it right over to the middle of the other gutter. So just like that, you can see we've created these lines that go horizontal and vertical, and now we just need to mask them, trim them, and make sure they fit right into place. So let's move along to step number nine, and this is gonna be taking care of this masking and, and creating maybe a little divider at each of these intersections. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna select all of these equal signs, and I'm going to, well, go ahead and shift click them all, then right click and choose convert to shape right there. And you can see we've got five different layers, but if we hit command or control E, we merge them together into one big shape layer. Now that we've done that, all we need to do is take our selection tool, and remember snapping is still turned on, so just drag a selection over this whole area where we want our our lines to be and then we'll go layer layer mask reveal selection and then we can zoom in and we can see if we hide the guides you can go view show guides hotkey command or control and the semicolon we can hide that we can see that we have our lines that are all trimmed within the area we want them to be now if we want to add some kind of little uh, icon or something to the intersection areas the first step would probably be to take your brush tool right click make sure you have a very hard edged brush and with your foreground color set to black, make sure you've selected the mask for this, uh, for these this series of equal signs, and just paint a dot like that over each intersection so we know we've knocked out the areas that are intersecting so we can drop some kind of icon or decorative mark or something into there. So we can do that very, very easily. You can see you can go through. You might want to take a touch more time and just make sure it's nice and clean. And if you don't like the line sticking up, which I don't, we can just get rid of them. You can zoom back out and look and make sure it looked, looks exactly as you want it to be. So now the last thing and the 10th thing that I want to show you is with these character styles, um, not only is it very helpful let's say we go in and we decide we want to change the tagline right so we, we can double click on tagline and we can say you know what instead of this being an italic we want to make it a bold you can see that our font automatically updates to bold maybe that's not the best example if we go to subheader where we have two bits of text two separate text fields we could say look we don't want this to be italic we want this to be bold and both bits of text will update I'm gonna cancel that I don't want to do that I'm only mentioning this because down here in the body text let's go to this bio area uh, what I've done is I've I've actually used two different character styles. For the italic text, I have this italic body text, and then for the bold bit, I'm using the bold body text. Why is this important? Well, let me show you. Let's just come up here and cancel out of this, not make any changes. We send this off to the client and the client says, hey, everything looks great, but we want to stray from the color scheme. We want all of the italicized text to be like bright blue or something ridiculous. Well, all we need to do is double click on italic body text here. And you want to be careful when you do this. You see, I had this text field selected and it went and changed everything to italic body text. So I'm going to just cancel that and let's choose to undo command or control Z and step backward command option Z or command or excuse me, control alt Z if you're on the PC. And let's just select the uh, the layer group. Now we'll double click italic body text and the client, they say, hey, we wanna go off color scheme. We wanna change the color of all the italicized text to like bright blue. So I just bring this up to blue, give Photoshop a second. It's gotta process all the text in this document and you're gonna see it automatically updates just the italicized text, none of the bold stuff to this bright blue color. And if we were to hit uh, okay and then okay again, it would save all those changes and we would have blue italicized size text, a massive time saver, but very important also that you can use multiple character styles, even just within one 
field of text. So I'll come over here and just hit cancel so we don't make any crazy changes. And I think I'll just back this out so we can see the whole thing again. Maybe I'll go to the more finished version where I got a texturized background and some other stuff added in here. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. 10 tips. I, oh, I think I crushed it in close to 10 minutes. I know we went a little over, uh, but not bad considering it was 10 tips and we really got into a, even a little bit of detail there in terms of some of the stuff we're covering and, and some of the goodness that has to do with creating this resume. Now, just as like an extra thing here, if you are interested in learning how to make this entire resume and everything I did to do this, drop a comment down below. I will be more than happy to create a full-fledged tutorial. It'll be, you know, much, much longer uh, that will go over how to do everything that you see here uh, in this resume. And also guys, as usual, I would love to see your graphic design projects on Instagram, upload them, share them, and tag me at tutvid. That is my username at T-U-T-V-I-D on Instagram. I would love to see the stuff that you're posting. If it's good stuff, I'll drop you a like, drop you a comment. You can drop me questions. I try to, you know, get the conversation going over there and it's a whole bunch of stinking fun. So for new documents and guides and shapes and colors and Adobe color and snapping and just stinking character styles and everything else. And I think I've used the term stinking at least three times now in this tutorial, which is a little out of character for me, but I'm pretty pumped about this one. Uh, it's really, really cool for all this stuff in Photoshop for graphic designers and more. That's it. Get it. Got it. Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.